Hello YouTube, it's me from the future here, beaming in with a corrected version of the video that I uploaded yesterday. Why? Because overnight I had a comment from one of my viewers pointing out, he said, great video, but do you realise you've left a load of edits in there? And I did not realise this. It was a very complex video to do, actually. I had loads of notes on my little pad. I went back and had a look, and lo and behold, in the bit where I'm going to go through the evidence from Chapter 5, I'd left in a load of outtakes, including one very embarrassing lemonade-inspired burp uh, which was spectacular uh, yeah also uh, there was a bunch of random key presses and camera views in that edit because that very morning I'd remapped all my hotkeys for the different camera views in OBS and boy did it show <laughs> that that was my first time using it so look I want to thank the viewer who pointed this out to me uh, he left a lovely comment and I really did appreciate it I hope he comments on this one too so this is the edited version there's no need to sit through this again if you've already watched my playthrough of chapter six all I've done is to correct those mistakes and one more which I found actually um, later in this video you'll discover above and below the camera view you can see now there's going to be a caption for a reason which will become apparent when you go into it let's just say <laughs> the same words were used top and bottom of the uh, the display but the spellings were quite different so you got to choose your favorite at that point and I've put that right too so look thanks again for pointing out the mistake you know who you were um, and for the rest of you I'm sorry you don't have to sit through this again you, if you've watched my chapter six then just keep your eyes open for chapter seven coming along which will hopefully be error free here we go then until dawn chapter six Hello, welcome to chapter six of Until Dawn. Right, based on events and evidence from chapter five, I have a brand new theory about what's really going on here. I'm going to explain that shortly. We're gonna look at the evidence in a minute, which led me to have that brand new theory. But first, let me explain why up until that point, I was all ready to abandon Victor Milgram and the unknown random killer as my suspects and name instead Chris as the psycho. What on earth made me think it could have been Chris? I'll tell you. Whose movements can we account for in Chapter 5? On the face of it, Jess is dead, Josh is dead, Mike is possibly dead, he's toast at least after setting off that explosion in the sanatorium, Sam is unconscious having been injected by the psycho, and Matt and M, a lot less confident M actually, I noticed in chapter five, are being pushed towards the edge of a cliff by a herd of elk. Who did we not see in chapter five? Ashley and Chris. Also, we picked up a fortune totem and I went back and looked at it closely and I think it shows Ashley letting Chris in through an open cabin door um, into a, into safety by the looks of it. And in that premonition, Chris, is limping. Why is that significant? Because in the scene where Sam was being chased through the lower levels of the main lodge, the psycho was limping. Also, remember, Chris was present at the possibly faked spirit board reading, and it was he who suggested that Ashley be the one who asked the questions. Now, there was a deal of prompting going on during that session, and it would be very easy for Chris to be steering the pointer to influence the answers the way he wanted them to be. And then Chris was the one who chose to let Josh die and save Ashley instead. So my theory was going to be, but it isn't anymore and I'll tell you in a second why not, that Chris might have had a messiah complex. He'd set all this up to get Ashley to like him. He wanted her to feel grateful, dependent on him, to look at him as her saviour. And then my Chris equals the psycho theory literally fell apart because of one bit of evidence we found and my suspicions have gone in a completely different direction. So before I explain who I think the psycho is now, let's look at the evidence and see why Chris gets ruled out. So I'm only going to look at those clues which are new to us or which have been updated or changed as a result of things that happened in chapter five. This is the page relating to the twins and the evidence to do with their disappearance, the fact that their bodies were never found. Clue one, film trophy, found Washington Lodge. 
an award for a movie that Josh's dad directed. Winner of Best Horror Film 2009, director Bob Washington, Blood Monastery. You must be so proud, Bob. Uh, clue three, prom night photo found in Washington Lodge. This is a photo of Hannah, Sam, Mike and Emily at the high school prom. This was dated the 25th of April 2013, ready for the senior prom. Hannah, Sam, Mike, Emily, don't they look happy? Not so much now. And the last one we need to look at on here is clue 10. Beth's phone, which we found on the mountainside. Beth never went anywhere without her cell phone. She must have passed this way on the night of the disappearance. The next page relates to 1952 and the events of the mine accident. Now, virtually everything on here is new or has been updated or relates to something else. So we're going to work through all of these. It's going to take a little while. Bear with me. They are important. Clue one, mine danger map. We've seen the map before. It shows structural faults in the mine, marked up by a mine engineer. It looks like the owners knew there was a risk of collapse. But the update is that according to the telegram, the owners were trying to cover this up. They knew the mine was dangerous and they wanted to carry on working it. Clue three, administration notes found in the sanatorium. This is a note asking staff to prepare beds for miners who were rescued after an incident at the mine. The miners were brought to the sanatorium to recover. The memorandum is from the 4th of January to sanatorium staff from Mr. Roosh, re-rescue of miners. Be advised that the minor rescue is due to be completed tomorrow, 5th January. As the number of surviving miners is unknown, prepare all beds in Ward A. The press shall be in attendance tomorrow. We must be seen to be giving the miners the best possible care. Note that press visitors are not to be allowed into the psychiatric ward. Failure in this regard would reflect badly upon Mr Bragg and the sanatorium as a whole and shall result in on-the-spot dismissal. Ouch. Uh, the next clue is for the broken camera found in the sanatorium. The lens of the camera is smashed. It looks like someone did this on purpose. The update is this must be the camera mentioned in the newspaper article. Someone really didn't want these pictures getting out. And clue five, the medical notes found in the sanatorium. Miners rescued from the mine were healthier than expected, although some had exhibited reintegration problems. The update is the report mentions 12 miners but there were 30 clocking in cards retrieved from the mine. There is no indication of what happened to the other 18 miners. And this was the minor medical report, attending physician Dr. NHF Bowen. Medical report. Report follows read the initial state of the 12 miners after the collapse of the mine and subsequent rescue at Blackwood Pines. Admittance. On receipt of the 12 patients at the sanatorium's medical facility, we had fully expected to find emaciated shells of men, starved and confused. Thankfully, the miners appear cogent and relatively healthy, attributed to their apparent discovery of emergency food supplies in the mine. Inhibited respiratory function was detected in a few of the older men, as predicted, as well as symptoms of pneumonia. Psychologically, after being trapped for 23 days, the shock of reintegration has been difficult for some of the group. Though their outward health is better than expected, they do seem affected by their time in the mine. Treatment. Due to the delicate nature of some of the patients, we have closed off the A-wing of the sanatorium. Psychological evaluations will take place as soon as possible. The men with respiratory problems have undergone a bronchoscopy and are prescribed a course of streptomycin. The others are simply kept under strict 24-hour observation. Signed, Dr Nicholas Henry Fowlers Bowen. Clue 6 is the clocking in cards themselves. A batch of 30 clocking in cards from the mine locked away in a safe. This means there were 30 miners trapped in the mine. Update, the photograph only showed 12 survivors. And here is that photograph, clue seven, mine rescue photo found sanatorium. A framed photo of the group of miners rescued after a cave in dated 1952. The plaque says that all 12 miners survived. Update, there were 30 clocking in cards from the mine. The caption reads, the miracle men, the successful rescue of all 12 miners trapped in the disaster of 5th January, 1952. Clue eight is the old newspaper found in the sanatorium, dated 1952, with a story about a reporter being banned from visiting a group of rescued miners. The reporter had his camera confiscated. 
The Alberta Post, 9th of January, 1952. Reporter assaulted on Blackwood Mountain. Blackwood Pines, AB. A reporter from the Alberta Bugle was assaulted and hospitalised yesterday by security personnel at Blackwood Sanatorium. Chuck Bernstein, a senior news reporter, was seeking an interview with the miners dramatically rescued on Tuesday. The men had been trapped underground for over three weeks after a structural collapse at the Northwest Mine in December and are now being treated at Blackwood Sanatorium for malnutrition and trauma. Jefferson Bragg, sole proprietor of both the Northwest Mining Company and the Blackwood Sanatorium, told the Bugle yesterday that the incident was, quote, unfortunate and that, quote, a full internal inquiry had been launched. He also claimed that Bernstein had been, quote, trespassing on sanatorium grounds without permission. It is believed that the assault arose from an argument about Bernstein's camera, which was confiscated immediately prior to the attack. Right, what's next? We have clue nine, the restraining chair we found in the sanatorium. A chair with leather straps to restrain the patient. There's blood on it. It looks like it was used as part of a weird experiment. I actually didn't spot the blood. Clue 10, telegram about the miners. A telegram warning about press interest in survivors brought to the sanatorium. The mine owners were trying to cover something up. And here is that telegram from Dr. Richard Castle to Mr. J. Bragg. Incident update. 12 survivors received at sanatorium. Showing signs of mental trauma may need to contain. Local press now have scent of blood. Becoming a problem. Please advise further. Clue 11 is a name tag found in the sanatorium. This is a mortuary tag. The name on it reads Nicholas Bowen. Emergency medical tag, name Nicholas Bowen, tagged 24th February 1952. Description, attack by inmate, facial lacerations to throat. What a way to go. Clue 12 was the strange skull we found in the sanatorium. A disfigured human head suspended in formaldehyde. And the last one on this page, clue 13, a death certificate found in the sanatorium. A hastily written certificate dated 24th of February 1952. It describes the body as partially eaten. Name of deceased, Sarah Smith. Date of death, February 24th, 1952. I hereby certify that I attended deceased from 8th March 1951 to 24th February 1952 and last saw her alive on 24th February 1952. Cause of death, severe lacerations to the abdomen intra-abdominal injuries, subsequent blood loss. If death was due to external causes violence, fill in also the following. Accident, suicide or homicide? Homicide. Manner of injury. Laceration by sharp implement, possibly fingernails. Additional notes. Please use the box provided overly for any additional relevant information. Signed by N. Bowen, M.D and dated 24th February. And on the reverse it says, additional notes, body was not discovered until six to eight hours after death. Sections of the intestine and kidneys were apparently eaten by the attacker. The next set of evidence is on the page called Mystery Man. Now, I speculated a while back as to whether the goggles guy outside and the psycho indoors were one and the same person. Increasingly, it seems they are not. Clue four, the axe holder we know about already. We've seen it on the Washington Lodge exterior. It should contain an axe, but the axe is missing. The update now, of course, is that Matt and Emily have found the axe buried in the wall of the cable car station. Um, the next clue we need to look at here is clue 13, which is a clippings wall that we found in the sanatorium. A map of the mountain with sightings and recent disappearances marked with dates. It looks like the work of an obsessive mind. Now, this is interesting. What is it that's been being tracked here? This thing with sightings attached to it. Uh, and who are all these people who've gone missing? Um, clue 14. Now, this is the one that upsets me because this disturbs my theory about Chris. This is a business card found at Washington Lodge. It's an order for saws and cutting blades from an abattoir supply business. It's not what you expect to be delivered to a remote mountain lodge. And it was from La Viande Meat Processing Limited uh, from Jack Mahoney, who, who manages the slaughterhouse equipment sales. 
and what was bought was one circular saw and five replacement blades. Now, if this is the circular saw which we observed chopping Josh in half, I'm really, really confused. Who can have ordered this for delivery to the lodge? See where we're going with this? It doesn't quite make sense. Clue 15 is the pig's head found on the mountainside. This looks like someone's been practicing with a circular saw. A pig's head dumped on the mountain. It's fresh and there's blood splattered over it. Look at that neat cut on its head. And clue 16 is the axe itself found in the cable car station door. An axe stuck into the door of the cable car station. It definitely wasn't there before. But then the paint that they saw daubed on the wall wasn't there before. Much has changed. Um, finally, just before we move on, I want to zip forward two pages onto the butterfly effect page because this is something I haven't looked at and it may not be tremendously significant, but uh, it reminds us of the status of our relationships. Any of your business. Right at the very start, Sam looked at Chris's incoming message. Sam got offended by Sam's indiscretion and Chris criticised Sam for being nosy. Um, rats with bushy tails. Chris chose not to shoot the squirrel. Nature remained in balance. Now, I talked about that a couple of episodes back as to whether it was important that we didn't harm the bird by throwing a snowball and we didn't shoot the squirrel. And now we've got Matt and Emily on the edge of a cliff being corralled by a bunch of elk. I wonder. Soul of discretion. Ashley encouraged Matt to use the telescope. Matt saw Mike and Emily flirting and then of course Matt confronted Mike. So that was one relationship ruined before it got started. Whose side are you on? Uh, yeah, when there was the, the discussion going on about Emily, Matt decided to side with Jessica during that fight. Be her hero. Mike came to Jessica's aid reluctantly. Jessica didn't appreciate Mike, Mike's reluctance to help but he did subsequently impress her and Jessica resisted Mike's advances, which was significant. And something for later. Josh locked the baseball bat in the cupboard, but Sam made the right choices to avoid the psycho in the cellar. Or did she? <laughs> Sam was caught in the old hotel, as we know. To the rescue! Mike stumbled when chasing after Jessica. Mike was too late. Jessica was dead. It wasn't Mike's fault, it was my fault. I'm not going to blame Mike for that. And which one will die? Chris said that he would save Ashley. That was a butterfly effect. At what price? Mike freed himself from the bear trap, but Mike no longer had a usable machete. Yes, we did spot that he'd broken the only weapon he was carrying. Man's best friend. Mike didn't kick the wolf. Mike made a friend. And on the same page, the last one, Matt supported Emily's plan to go to the tower and get help, which actually I think brought them close together. All right, that was all the evidence from chapter five. So that was the evidence. Now on to my exciting new theory of who the psycho is. Now I am excited by this, so much so that I'm going to put on screen a possible spoiler alert warning above and below my picture. I'm pretty confident I've worked out who the psycho is. If you don't want to hear this, then you need to move forward to the point in the video where you can no longer see that warning on screen and rejoin me at that point. Okay, you have been warned. Right. There's a whole bunch of clues which point to someone unexpected as being the psycho, but for this to work, we have to set aside our preconceptions of who is alive and who is dead at this point in the game. Because my suspect, based on motive and opportunity, is Josh. Here's why. One, the abattoir card talking about the circular saw and blades being delivered to the lodge. That trap was built using that saw on some sort of device that was conveying it on rails that were built into the floor with a lever operating the mechanism, shackles on the wall for the poor tormented people, an audio system, all of that stuff would have taken days if not weeks to build. Whoever did this has to be someone with access to the lodge, 
way ahead of our group arriving there. It can't have been Chris. He arrived at the same time as everybody else. Josh, on the other hand, had a key. He would have had access. This is the Washington family home in the mountains. He could have taken all the time he liked to prepare his evil plan. He would know every nook and cranny of the buildings, as well as the underground passageways. Hence, Josh has opportunity. Two, the elaborate CCTV system used by the psycho. I believe this is in the lodge somewhere. And again, only a person who had free access could either have set it up if this was done especially for the reunion or if it was already present, known of its existence to be able to use it. Josh ticks both boxes. Three, Sam. She didn't believe that Josh had coped with the events of one year ago. She felt it had affected him badly. I believe she's right. He does blame the group for what happened to Hannah and Beth. So much so that him organising this anniversary reunion is purely about exacting revenge upon them for what they did. Hence the same location as well, which always had me suspicious. Why would you go back to the place that had so bad memories? So he has motive. Four, Sam again. She's only knocked out by the psycho, not killed outright. Curious. Now we know Josh has this latent thing for Sam. He tried talking to her about it when they were downstairs in the lodge looking to turn the power back on. And she sort of rejected him and pushed him away by saying, I'm here like all your other friends are for you, Josh. In other words, don't make, th make this about me and you. Was that enough to make him decide that she deserved to be targeted as his next, next victim for tormenting? Five, the pig's head on the trail. It looked like it had been very neatly sawn off the pig. Did Josh do this? Was he just practising with a circular saw? I don't think so. I think he needed the body of the pig, the flesh, the innards, the blood, because he wanted to fake his own death and he needed it to look realistic. Hence the stuff spraying everywhere from the circular saw all over Ashley, poor Ashley, all over the floor as well. And it would have explained why he arranged the psycho's speech in advance and distorted the voice and made it disguised so that it could not be recognised. And the same thing applies to Sam in the movie theatre. And six, Dr Hill. His last bit of psychoanalysis suggested he's talking to the perpetrator. He said, we've turned our overwhelming fear of isolation is this a reference to Josh now that he doesn't have Beth and Hannah in his life? Does he feel cut off and alone in the world? And we've turned it against our friends. Josh's friends? Is this Josh using his anger in this reunion and his fears of isolation being left on his own in the world as a weapon to take revenge against the people he holds responsible for putting him in this new situation? So, Josh, Victor Milgram, move aside. I don't know who the stranger is, the, the goggles wearing pyromaniac out there in the woods. That could be Victor Milgram, I guess. But as for the psycho, Josh is now my favourite suspect. Hi, welcome back if you missed that bit out. So let's talk totems before we move on, because chapter five was like Totem City. There were so many of them and we need all the help we can get. First off, Mike picked up a fortune totem, which showed him standing in beside some big wooden doors or gates out in the snow. It didn't show much more than that. Uh, Matt found a death totem. This could be significant. He is on the edge of a cliff at the moment. It showed him falling onto some rocks and lying there motionless, apparently lifeless with his eyes open. Mike also discovered a death totem, but that was the one where he had a lighter and uh, there was an explosion. Now, in the game, in Chapter 5, he fired a bullet at the lock, which ricocheted off and set fire to some rags on the floor. Then we saw the gas cylinders and there was an explosion. So was that meant to be the same explosion, but we've dodged it somehow by doing it a different way? And does that mean, therefore, that Mike might not be dead? He may have survived it. Mike also found a lost totem. Uh, I had to go back and look at this one as it was quite short. But I think it showed Matt again, poor Matt, I, I just this by the collar on the jacket he was wearing, uh, with his face smashed in. 
So that's another way Matt could potentially die. And finally, Matt found a guidance totem which showed Emily handing him a gun. So I'm guessing there's a situation going to arise very soon where that is going to happen or be a possibility. And we need to make it happen if that's the case. Right. Chapter six. Besides the above, I would also like to know, please, what killed Jess? I'd like to know what exactly happened to turn some of the miners into cannibals. And I'd also like to know who's leaving these totems around for us to find. Many things we need answers to. Let's go and get some of them, shall we? On to chapter six, until dawn. Right, here we go. Chapter six, vengeance, five hours until dawn. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Um, stay calm, Emily. Stay calm. Relax. They're just deer. I just want to check us out as well. No, 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 Matt. They're going to hurt us. I'm not sure they are, but we'll see. All status update. Um, left stick. Oh, I see we're moving. I'm going to move towards the deer. Oh, they're moving away. Gently, gently, gently. M, follow me. M. <laughs> M. Uh, I'm just going to turn the sound down slightly on my headphones because it's rather loud. There we go. Sorry about that. Are you all right, Matt? Yes, he says, I'm fine. I'm standing here amidst all these ear stroke delk. Deer stroke elk. They're watching you. Ooh. You're not thinking what I'm thinking. Do nothing. Just walk slow. Yes. It's okay. Come on. Sometimes okay. the thing to do is to do nothing. That was not going to end well if he'd started swinging away at those deer stroke elk. Ear stroke dealt. Oh, butterfly effect update. Uh. Emily Clifftop, 2.21 in the morning. You should all be in bed. And now Emily is in control of the light. And that means we might be able to find stuff on the floor. This often happens. So we're going to be looking. Hello, birds. Matt, stick close by. There's got to be something. There's got to be something. There's all. Whenever you get given a torch like if this, if we do manage to get someone on the radio, we will. Then we tell them we need help. We do. What do we do while we wait? We go back to the lodge and get everyone else. Yes. Oh God, not the lodge. We should stay here in case whoever it is needs to get back in touch with us. Let's mm. get that radio working first. Yeah, let's let's cross that bridge when we fall off it. Uh, we're on the approach. We haven't seen anything at all of interest yet anywhere. It's not going to let us go that way. We're being funneled. Uh, it's the fun of the funnel. Well, there's the radio tower. Hooray. Um, I'm keeping my picture over on the left hand side of this. Oh, that's freaking bright. Green again. I can't see. What is that? It's just a security light. Motion sensor, probably. All right. Oh, no, there is something on the floor over there. Hang on, let's just walk back this way a bit. No, there's nothing here, but there is something there, Emily. Emily, it's right in front of you. Pick it up. Totem. Here we go. Are we ready for this? Let's go. Chris with a gun in his hand. And putting the gun down on a table. Um, all right. Chris hasn't got a gun. This is new. It's very new. Um, um, shine your torch around. No, nothing. I guess we're going up into the radio tower. This is a pretty good plan, actually. If they can get to the radio tower and get the radio working. I'm sorry, there was a little glitch there again. It's that network error thing. I only seem to get it once during each playthrough. And it did it just there. And it's always in the first few minutes. It's bizarre. Um, I don't know whether it's something to do with it being an older game, being played on a PS5. I don't know. I'm not an expert in these things. I have no knowledge. I do know that we need to look around down here. Because there's a hole there. Don't fall down it. Emily, do not go down that hole. All right. It looks like we're going up a ladder. 
can't see anything else. We've not missed anything, have we? I want to go back into this corner. Excuse me while I do it. As you know, death can be fatal. Uh, all right, it's a ladder. How are you with ladders, Matt? They don't seem to hold any fear for Emily. She's on her way. That's probably sensible. Matt's guiding her and guarding her from behind, I should say, with his axe. Oh, goodness, didn't do that. Uh, right, we're on a platform. Let's look around it without falling down that hole that seems to be there. This, this thing's falling to pieces. It's not supposed to look like this, is it? Is it disused? Oh, don't tell me we've come all this way for a disused radio tower. It looks a bit um, in need of a paint job, doesn't it? Oh, that tattered... Um, Why is it so windy all of a sudden? Fabric. We're almost inside. Because you're getting higher up. That's why it's getting so windy all of a sudden. And there's nothing to see on any of these platforms. How very disappointing. Oh, careful, careful. Can we climb this ladder? Yes, we can. Let's go. Ladder number three. Can't be far now, can it? It does look disused. All that tattered fabric, all these cables dangling off the edge. The fact that the paintwork is... Ah, hang on, I've got to R2 my way through this loft hatch thing. Up you go, Em. Careful now, you haven't got a weapon. Is this it? Are we there? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? That's it. Shine it in his face so he can't see what he's doing as he's coming up the ladder. I don't know why she's brushing snow off. This lot are just immune to the cold from what I've seen. Yeah. She's great. She's absolutely, oh, absolutely great. Um, let's open everything we can and see what's in it. Oh, it's a missing poster. Sorry, missing. I'm still missing. After Have you s seen this person, Hannah Washington? Hannah Washington was the last seen in the location of the Blackwood Pine Ski Lodge, Alberta, between 1.30 a.m. and 2.30 a.m. on Feb 2, 2014. She may have been in some distress. You ain't kidding. Uh, identifying clothing features, Hannah was wearing a black top, dark jeans and brown leather boots. She was not wearing a coat. She has glasses and has a tattoo on her right shoulder. And there's her height, weight, eyes and hair both brown. Can you help call? Okay. Um, that looks like a radio to me, so I'm not going to go to that straight away. We're going to go over here and see if there's anything this side of the room. There isn't. Oh, wait a minute. We have a door and we have... Is that a printer? It is a printer. Oh, it can't possibly work. So, no power. Yes. Uh, that means the radio won't work then. So there's no point going to the radio. Then there is a door. Yeah, and we can open it. <laughs> Careful. Get yourself blown off the edge of the cliff. Aha! Aha! Fuse box. Oh, you watch it, will go. No, apparently not. Yes. Yeah, here we go. Yes, except for the expletive, I agree with you. Oh, we're a team suddenly. These two have bonded a bit recently, actually. I think this, this has brought them closer together experiencing this danger. Press that button. It works. Oh, we get to tune the radio? We get to tune the radio. Um, it's saying right stick. Hang on. Oh yeah, I got it. Is that right? No, we're not in the right place. Hang on. Right stick. I am right sticking. I'm sticking the right stick. Major service for Blackwood County. Over. We've got it. This is it. Hello? 
press to talk. Anyone there? Hello? Please say something if you're out there. Please, we need help. Over, over. Shit. Hello. Oh my god. Thank god, we need help. Please. Hello, is someone trying to contact us? This is the Park Ranger service for Blackwood County. Oh, this is good. You your signal very well. Please speak slowly and clearly. Over. Please, 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 please. Oh my god, we're stuck on Blackwood Mountain. There's a maniac. Slowly, clearly. Please repeat your message as I'm unable to understand what you are saying. Please help, please. Hello? Emily, slow down. Identify yourself. Over. Um, comply. Oh my god, okay. This is... My name is Emily. Emily, you're not pressing Hello? the button. You're not pressing the button, Emily. Clearly, please repeat. Over. Um, inform them. We're on Blackwood Mountain by the ski lodge. There's a killer and he's after us. He's already killed one of our friends. Oh God, please help. He's got to help us. Right. Oh! <laughs> oh, not now. Please do not leave your position. We will send out Yes! What? What? How long? Who knows? Dawn, at the earliest. Ooh, until dawn. Not until dawn. Oh, <laughs> until dawn. What was that? Oh my god, he's here! He's coming for me! <gasps> well, put something on top of it. It's gone away. Oh no! Not the guy ropes! In that wind! Oh, I don't like this! We're gonna go! It's gonna go! He's gonna tip the whole tower! No! No! This can't be how they die! Emily! Oh, Emily! Oh no! This is like day after tomorrow. Oh, I actually managed to do something right. Oh no 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 no! Not again! Shit! Now the radio is working. Ooh! Hang on, hang on, Em. Hang, hang on. Come on, Matt. You've got to do something. No. Where? Where's the rest of the tower gone? <laughs> There's the rest of the tower. Oh. It's in the mines. Oh, the tower's penetrated the ground and gone into the mines. Damn it! This is great. Matt, come on. Come on, Matt. Oh god, it's gonna want me to do something again, isn't it? Matt! Oh god, Matt, help me, please! I'm coming! I'm coming! I can't see how you can both survive this. Matt, you've gotta do something right now! What are you waiting for? I'm thinking! Let me think! Don't think, you idiot! Just get me out of here! Uh, supportive. Suspicious, I saw you. Emily, in you're upset. You need to calm down. You're gonna be fine. Ah, stop talking! I can't take it! Uh, stop yelling at me and let me work this out, okay? Think fast, Matt. Think no, fast. You stop it! Why do you question every little thing I say? I'm goddamn sick of it! Oh. Just be nice to her. I'm gonna try and get to you and pull you up. Yeah, come on. Please get me off this goddamn tower. Please, 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 Matt, just do something! What can you do? What can you do? Uh, we're both, we're all gonna die. Jump. Uh, you're both no. gonna die. If you go down there, oh. ah! you're both gonna die. Look. Matt, Jesus! I'm just trying to, to 
find the safest way to get to you. You idiot, just get Which is which? Oh, I don't like this. What have I got to do? Jump. There's no point trying to do that. I'm really sorry, Emily. I had to think about it, but there was no point trying to do it. There was no point trying to do it because if he'd gone onto the structure with her, they'd have both ended up going down there and they'd be two dead. So I've saved 50% of the cast. Okay. <laughs> Where are we? She you? wasn't up there? I don't know. I didn't see her. She must have come down here. I yeah. haven't seen her either. Um, oh, we are Ashley and we are walking. <gasps> Did that just happen? Damn it. What is going on around here? Ah, now, you say what's going on around here. Pick that up and look at it. This, as we all know, is ready for the senior prom. Hannah, Sam, Mike, Emily. But now you've seen it too. Um, we're going to walk around. Chris, you can go down there if you like, but I want to see what's up here first. Just in case. We can walk around as well. It may not actually provide us any new clues, but having just possibly killed Emily, I'm pretty sure she's dead, actually, after that fall. I, I honestly don't believe it was possible to save her. If Matt had jumped across that gap and landed on that structure with her, it would have taken both of them down into the ravine or whatever it was, and I'd have lost two of them in quick succession. We do know this part of the lodge because we've been and looked at it before. There's the TV, which occasionally shows weird things, but isn't working at the moment. Well, press it. Let's see. Nope. There's nothing on. You haven't paid your cable, have you? Um, so, yeah, that was Emily. It was good knowing you. Pity, because I think she was just starting to, you know, come into her own a bit. And she was certainly getting closer to Matt and they were working together as a team, which makes it all the more sad. What's that over there? Ooh, ooh, R2. No new messages. Oh, okay. That's a shame. Um, they were getting closer together. It's all the more a pity that their beautiful relationship had to end in such a dramatic fashion. Still, they'll always have the radio tower. Um, how did you get in there? You can't get out. <laughs> yeah, I tried the TV. It's not working. Let's go back over to Chris. He'll be getting lonely. Oh, actually, let's just pop up here and look at these two doors again and see if they're both still locked as they were when Sam tried them. Yeah, that's still locked. And this one is also still locked. All right, OK. Got it, got it. There's nothing in here, is there? Oh, wait a sec. Have you seen this? We've seen it. This is the La Viende Meat Company saying you owe me some money for uh, circular saws and replacement blades. 15th of January. Do you notice I hadn't noticed the date on that before? So this is roughly, what, a month? or so before the reunion and the disappearance. Is that what we're to read into that? Um, which those of you who listened to my theory at the start of this episode will understand Chris, why I'm... Chris, I just want to say what happened back there in the shed. I know how hard that was. Josh was your friend. He was. No, I want to say, I mean, thank you. Thank you for saving my life. Don't so talk about it. It's fine. What was I going to do? I, I, I couldn't let anything happen to you. I couldn't. Oh, that's nice. That's nice, Chris. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to listen to Chris because he's off my suspect list now. Pick it up. Let's look at it. Oh, happy families. Josh with his lovely sisters, Hannah and Beth, looking great, guys. This was back in 2016, in the August. In the summer, heading towards the autumn. Uh, I know Chris has gone down there. <laughs> I'm just wanting to, yeah, yeah, check our escape routes if required. Oh, 
to lose somebody so quickly at the start of this episode is a body blow, actually. Yes, I'm coming. Honestly, you're so insistent. It's a body blow. I mean, the game could have waited like 10 minutes. <laughs> Give me a bit more time with them. Sure. Alive. Yeah, I just... Yeah, yeah. I'm just walking backwards and forwards. Josh, we're close. Chris? Let's just find Sam, okay? That, that's what we're doing I mean, now. oh my God. Ashley, just stop, okay? I don't want to think about what just happened. Chris. We're finding Sam. We are looking for Sam. There is a difference. Finding her is what you say when you, you actually come across her. Then you can say you found her. At the moment you're looking. Oh, this is the movie theater. I've only just realized this from the circular seat arrangements. This is a pretty neat thing, isn't it? For the Washingtons to have in their little winter lodge. Look at it. I'm impressed. But then Mr. Washington is a movie mogul. So, you know, he's probably going to be watching a load of his own films. It's a pity we can't see more of these posters, but they won't let us get close enough to do it. I guess we're meant to go this way. And I'm so happy that we've both got torches. <laughs> Oh, Ashley. Oh, she, she doesn't handle these scares well, does Ashley? Right, have we got choices now? I don't like choices like this. Let's see if this door's open. It's not. Thank you, game. <laughs> At least it makes life simple. Uh, excuse me a minute, Chris. I want to walk to this end of the corridor and see if there's anywhere we can't go there. We're being funneled. Yeah. This is so effed up. What happened then? Just slammed in her face. Do it again. That's, that's really creepy. And now it's locked. Ooh. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. All the little horror mechanisms are coming out now, aren't they? Very good, though. Very effective. <gasps> Wait a minute. What the... Did you just see that? Yes. Um, did, did I see what? That, Chris! That! What that was that? It was like... It was like a see-through shape, like a ghost. Oh, boy. I'm yep. serious. Why don't you believe me? I said I saw it. Doesn't that count for anything? Wait. Hell tonight, okay? Your mind is fried. My mind is fried. I, I don't even trust what I've been seeing. I think she's going to insist that she saw something because we saw no, it. No, you are wrong. I saw it and I am sure, Chris. Come on, Chris. All right, all right. Maybe, maybe it's, maybe you did see something. Let's just, let's just keep our heads. Are we going crazy down here? It, it's it's the only place left Sam could be, Ash. I wish we could just go find everyone else and... What if Sam needs us? What if she's in trouble? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, this isn't helping. Let's go this way. The door's just open for us to go through. Well, at least he's leading the way now. Status update. Oh, Ash, she's terrified. And I don't blame her. This isn't great. <laughs> what's that noise? What, what, what's that noise? Please? Chris, where have you gone? He's gone and left her on her own again. Chris? Chris? Oh, you're a great help. Oh, here he is. Um, scanning, come on. Let's not rush, because there could be... <laughs> Something is coming here, isn't it? We're 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 oh, losing. Whoa, whoa, you, whoa, you gotta be kidding me! What the hell is going on? What? Oh my god, that scared me. You, you knocked into it, right? I mean, you knocked into it. I don't think so. I mean, I don't know. The whole. It's so freaky around here. Doors slamming and candles lighting up out of nowhere, and that. Or whatever Ashley, it was. I, I, I think you're kind of ignoring what's really happening here. What is happening, Chris? You didn't see that translucent white figure just passing right by us. We, we, we could be seeing things. I'm not imagining things. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I saw things too. I, 
I, I, I saw what happened to Josh in the shed. You know, that, that's, that's what I'm worried about. Oh, Chris. Chris, come over here. I know. I know. You know what I'm really worried about? Okay, I'm worried about Sam. What, what, what's happened to her? If there's some maniac out here, then she could be dead too. Don't say that. Please, Chris. Yeah, Chris. Come over here. I found something. Um, poor Ashley. What now? Look, 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 look Chris. You can see in the windows. See what? It's tiny furniture? No. It's a whole scene with dolls and everything. Yeah? Oh! It's got a camcorder. Oh, we know what this is. I think I know what this is. Yes, I am right sticking. I'm right sticking. Game. Game. It's, it's sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't this. Um, that mechanism isn't working. There may be a gap here while I work out what's going wrong. I am using the right stick to try and move this thing. There it goes. You need a key if you want to play around in there. Oh, a key? Oh, we missed a clue. Whoa, whoa! Wait, Chris, 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 <laughs> He's missed it again. No. <laughs> oh, Chris. Phone, you dip. What are you tweeting? Yeah, you dip. There's a freaking ghost after us. Ash, calm down, okay? There is no ghost here. A ghost of what? You you're freaked out because of what happened with Josh. You're not Probably. paying attention. I saw it. I saw a ghost, and it looked like Hannah. It looked wait, like wait, Hannah. Wait, 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 what? Her baby's bad. Jesus, Ash. What, what, what do you think? They followed us up here from the seance? I don't know. Maybe. They didn't because ghosts don't exist, okay? Oh, okay, who was talking to us at the seance, Chris? Uh, I don't point. know. <laughs> what? Oh, what? What oh, I don't know. The picture just jump off the wall like that. I, I don't know. Look, I want to find this key that we're supposed to have for that doll's house thing that's got a lock in it. Um, I'm looking around environmentally. Key, where are you? <laughs> oh, come on. You've. Ooh, where is this? Oh, I did, I'm not sure I meant to go this way. I might have to turn around and come back. Don't open that door, <laughs> especially with with Chris not with you, Ashley. Um, there's no key there. There is no key there. Let's look this way because we haven't been all the way around the room. And we can't go any further that way. And the doll's house is over there. Where have, where have we not been? Yes, yes. Um... Come on, there's got, you've got to show me the key. Where's the key? I'm going to be so annoyed if I've missed the key. I think I have. I think I've missed something somewhere. And you know, I was thought I was being careful. I actually thought I was being careful and methodical. Oh, heck. Chris, move out of the way. I'm annoyed. Um, I'll just have a look in this cupboard again. I didn't go right up to it. No, nothing. Not a sausage. Oh, yes, we did go in this bit. But there was nothing there either. Um, all right, I'm going to go back and look at the picture that fell on the floor. I'm going to regret it. Unless that picture is harboring a key somewhere. Does that go anywhere there? No, it doesn't. Come back, Emily, come back. Go back to Chris. Let's go down here and look at that there picture thing. Chris, could you follow me, please? <laughs> Safety in numbers. We can't look at it. Oh, oh, what's this? The key. We've got the key. Or two. Huh. Here you go. There, there, behind you, behind you, behind you. Chris, oh my Chris, God. Chris, there. Chris. Look there, Chris. Tell me you didn't wow, see that. Uh, see? That's uh You do see it. I don't know. Look at her, she's I, distraught I, with I, it. Just, this is fucking crazy. She's so relieved that he's seen it now. Uh showing you the way to what and who though. Doesn't mean it's showing you the way to Sam, does it? Oh. Alright, I really don't necessarily want to do this, but I'm going to. I feel like the ghost wanted me to see this. 
What? Let's see what you've won. Yes. What is going on? Oh God, it's it's like it's not like anything. That's us hiding there, waiting for Hannah. Yes. But it's it's so accurate. I mean, that's exactly where I was sitting, and that's where Matt was. This was set up by someone who was there, or someone or something that was watching us. Maybe yep. it's a warning. I think someone, I think someone put this here to mess with us. No, it has to be the ghost. It's trying to tell us the maniac killed Hannah and Beth. I think it's this bastard that he's he's here trying to fuck with our heads. Why would he set this all up, Chris? He's trying to tell us that he's gonna come after us all too. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, good grief! This is amazing. Oh, whose diary is this? It's Hannah's diary. Hannah's diary. Mum finally agreed. The invitations are out. The party's going to happen. I hate that I have to wait. So far, Ash, Matt, and Sam have said definitely yes. Nothing from Mike. And then January 18th, OMG, Mike confirmed he phoned Josh this afternoon. Big smiley, happy face. And then Everyone February. Together here on the mountain is going to be so awesome. Cozy fires and hot tubs and OMG, Mike, I am so psyched to spend some time with him. I can't read this. It's so uh, sad, Chris. It is sad. I'll read it for you. Totally got to stop obsessing, but I can't help it. It said. What was that? Someone is messing with you. The candles, the picture. <laughs> She's not too keen about staying with him, is she? Oh, I think Ashley's done really well in this, this episode. She's been so engaged. This has been about her, actually. Chapter six has been about Ashley, I think. Chris has been there, but you know, she's been the one who's been seeing everything first, experiencing things on her own. And even Chris, I think, is struggling now to say there's not something going on. Oh, have I got to walk in there through that cold, misty vapour? Oh. <laughs> that was great. Oh no! No! Nothing. Oh. But you did see it, Chris. For real. Yeah, for real. Uh, something. Oh. Where'd it go? I don't know, but I do know there's something glinting over here, which I'm going to look at. Hey, look at this. Ashley, hey, look at this. I ordered some of the stuff down here. It's a catalog for industrial light bulbs. That is so random. It is. Industrial light bulbs, huh? Um, it, it's not letting us sort of zoom in on the text or anything. There's nothing to read. Look, one of the bulbs is circled. That's yeah, a powerful bulb. Oh, all right, that was an original lamp with an awful lot of wattage. Oh. And we found a pair of scissors. Uh, yes, Ashley, we like those pair of scissors. <laughs> In your back pocket. Good idea. I wonder why it's given us those scissors. Perhaps we're going to be cutting up some celebratory bunting for the anniversary. Or something. What's the X there? It's a doll's head. I think it can't get any creepier. Oh. 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 <laughs> Every single thing, Ashley. Is there nothing nice in this place? Uh, we're going that way, aren't we? Yeah, we've got to walk towards ourselves. It's always confusing when the point of view changes so that suddenly you're walking towards yourself. There he is. There's Chris bravely leading the way. I don't know, the whole lodge seemed to shake. Enough to loosen dust and grit and stuff from the rafters and boards above you. Um, caution wet floor. That ought to have a sign on it. There's a whole nother room through here. A whole nother? Chris, I don't know if I want to keep going. I don't think you've got a choice here, Ashley. I do applaud you for shining your torch into every corner though, because clues, we're going, we're going down. This is getting more and more decrepit the further we go. Look at it. Are we now? 
How old is this? Did you know this was here? This this is like a whole other hotel. I had no idea this was here. Oh, uh, look how old the radiators are. Yeah, this is this is this is um not on the beaten track. Shine that torch into those corners, young Emily. Let's miss no clues. What was that? Nothing. Chris, where'd you go? Don't you go leaving me. I'm too young to die. Another words of wisdom, Chris? Poor Ashley, look at her. More of this. No. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm about at my limit here too. All I wanted to do was forget last year ever happened. And to be honest, I'm not sure what Hannah thought she was doing. Yeah. Well. Really? You know how it is when you're crushing pretty hard on somebody. Great. So you're basically saying that we put a vulnerable friend in a terrible situation and, and essentially caused her to run away and never to be heard from again. That's interesting. Uh, she didn't overreact. If it was you, don't you think you would have run away? Yes. I mean, who likes being made fun of? <laughs> yeah. People don't make fun of me. Come on, face. Chris. What? Chris, we made her look so stupid in front of all of her friends and the guy she liked. I can't imagine doing anything worse to somebody. Oh, status update. So they've had a conversation about this and it's clear which side of the fence Ashley is on. I'm not so sure about Chris. He sees, still seems a little bit... Oh, we've got something glinting. I see glinting. What is this? Oh no. What is it? Sam's bracelet. And she never takes this thing off. Well, you can't say that now. You gotta find her. Fast. Uh, but not so fast that we miss environmental clues. Such as whatever it is that's on the floor over there, signalling, come look at me. So I will. Ooh. Ah. Hey. Return address, Quality Copy Limited. This is lots of copies of the newspaper where the janitor was arrested for arson. Newspapers. <laughs> that's a really good question. It was fake? <laughs> it was fake? But that would have to mean that the message on the answer phone was fake as well then. So all this stuff about Victor Milgram is a red herring. Did Victor Milgram not even exist? Oh, I'm starting to doubt just about everything here. But you're still safe, Chris, and Ashley, so are you. You know what? No. Ash. No, no. I've had enough. I'm not going down any further into this nightmare, Chris. Yeah, she's got a point. I understand, okay? I'm really freaked out too, but if Sam's down there all alone with a maniac and we leave, we're basically killing her ourselves. Mm, he's got a point. Um, courage. Courage, Ashley. God damn it. Ashley, come on. Why are you always right? I'm not always right. Well, he's not. when you're right, you're right. I don't want to be. I want to leave. No. We've got to find Sam. Let's go. Okay, look at that. Status update. There's a bit of resolution there as well in Ashley. These two are getting closer together in purpose. She's not as scared now. She's not as freaked out. I think she's past the f totally freaked out stage and into something completely new. I don't know what follows being totally freaked out. Oh, oh, okay. We've got a look around stage. Let's do this. Um, I don't think there was anything this way. Do you know what I've noticed in this section so far? We've only found one totem. This seems strange, because I think there was something like six in the previous chapter. Six is a lot of totems. Come on, this is just the sort of place there'd be a totem. Maybe not. Oh, oh. That's not a totem. What is this? Um, can we go anywhere near that? It's not letting us go near it. It is letting us go near it. 
Clue found batteries and timers. It's a dry charge battery with a button that says lights and it's a um, it's a twistable knob. Looks like you can actually set it as a timer. And same with the TV. Interesting. So this is part of the spookiness. Someone is trying to freak us out here. Someone wants us scared, off balance, not making good decisions. They've already encouraged the two of you to have a conversation, which was an interesting one. Um, I, uh, do, 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 I don't want to know if I go, want to go that way yet. Let's just look around in here. Um, what the heck? That's like half a dummy strapped to a board. What's that all about? There's nothing down there. I thought there might have been something glinting at us. This has been a really good exploration um, based episode. I've really enjoyed this. All these nooks and crannies. Okay, this is a cutscene. <gasps> Calm down. It's happened before. Both of you just keep your heads. Oh, environmental clues. Oh, jeez. This is so enticing. Clue found hooks and chains. Is this blood? Is this paint? Like down in the oh, boy. cable car station. You think all this stuff is... His? Unless the Washingtons were into some freaky shit in their spare time, then yeah, probably. Okay, all right, let's keep looking round. Honestly, honestly, every tiny bit of evidence now could be the one that keeps us alive or condemns us to death. Um, what's this? What is it? That's us. Oh. Clue found photos of friends. Mm. I mean, what is this? Like a fucking hit list? I think it might be. Or at least it's made to look like that's what it is. If, if we accept the theory that we're being steered here, we're being channeled, we're being sent in a direction that the psycho wants us to go, he wanted you to find that. He wanted you to see it. Oh no, you've got to be kidding me. Repulsive! <laughs> this can't be for Eden. Why the hell no. is that No. Uh, a goddamn grindhouse movie in here. Clue found dead pig. Someone's removed the pig's innards. That's interesting. That's just plain interesting. On the face of it. Oh no, let's not stop to do any cooking. <laughs> Bacon sandwich, anybody? No? Okay, good, good, fine. We're gonna move around. Look at that hook menacingly swaying there in the breeze. Uh, we haven't shown our torch over here yet. Oh god, I love these environments. Can you imagine having the talent, imagination, foresight, and all the rest of it to create something like this? I mean, if you just, you know, put it on your CV. Oh yeah, I worked on the environment for Until Dawn. You stick what? Yeah, I saw the door. I saw the door. Oh, do you know what? I think we probably need to open it because Chris has disappeared. Let's try it. I bet it's locked. I bet it's locked. It's not locked. Um, Chris. <laughs> Chris, Chris, Chris. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not going in there yet. Go find Chris. Go find him. Oh, is this an either or? Is this going to trigger another cutscene and won't allow me go to go back? Chris, I've found something. Chris. What are you staring at, Chris? Oh, crap. Ooh. Look at that. What? Might be Sam's. All right, let me see if I can get this. Yeah, uh, I don't I know that we should go through there. Damn, this thing is heavy. Be careful. This You're isn't the other side of where I we just were, was it? Uh, oh, come on. Chris! Wait, to what? I think I just saw Sam over there. Uh, Ash, are you sure? I don't know, but come on, I think we should check it out. Uh, well, I'm pretty sure whoever's bleeding came through here, okay? So we really gotta get moving, like now. Um. 
Should we follow Chris? We better follow Chris. We've got to stay together. Follow Chris. Okay. Okay, yeah, you're right. I'm coming. <sighs> I'm not letting them split up. When they split up, butterfly effect update, that's when people die. Come on. Uh, I would have liked to have gone back and seen what that projector was going to show, but I... What's, what's going on with the orchestral crescendo? Ah! No! <laughs> no! Yeah, that's, that's just Sam's clothes. That's just... Sick. I'd say that's just sick. So the psycho has been down here, for sure. Yes. Down here. Yes. I hope not. What? Is this thing even here? Million dollar question. It's there for you to find. Come on. By now, you've got to start questioning reality. Everything you know. Oh, we have more doors. And nothing else to pick up in here, I, I don't think. Let me just check what we could pick up. Uh, pig, 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 pig. And uh, skeleton dressed as Sam. Yeah, no. None of those, excuse me. None of those things appeal. So we're going to go through these doors. Sam? That is Sam. Or it was Sam's voice. That was Sam, wasn't it? Do we all think that was Sam? I think that was Sam. Oh, oh that door opens as well. Um... <laughs> There's too many places to explore. Oh, there's another door. Uh, Chris, will you move? Honestly. Can we, we can't go that way. Thank goodness we can't go that way. So look, we've got two doors here. We've got this one and that one. Let's try the big ones first. They open. Oh, Chris. Oh, no. Hello? Sam? Is that Sam? Oh no, this can't be what I think it is. Sam! She's still alive. Is she dead? Holy shit, holy shit. She's not, she's not, she's not, she's dead. not dead. How do you know? She's still breathing. What the hell is wrong? She's been knocked out. Oh, oh no, 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 no. This is bad, this is bad. We've got to get Ooh, her behind out of here. Chris, Chris, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley. No, no Psycho. Stay the hell away from me. Stay the hell away from her. Don't do anything. Oh. I think he would have killed her if she'd done something. Oh, he's knocked her out. He's only knocked her out. So Sam's knocked out. Chris is knocked out. Ash is knocked out. Ash! Wake up, wake up. Ash! Don't like that movie camera. Shit, I'm gonna murder his fucking face off. <laughs> what is this? This is him. No, Chris. This is the guy who killed Josh. No, God. no, God. You murdered a piece of shit? Oh, you monster! Look how rough we're gonna die, Chris. I don't think I'm ready to die. No one is going to die. I wish I could tell you. It's just not fair! Ah! What? Tell me what? It's too late. Chris, what's the point? Stop it. Just say. We're always Say what's in your heart. It. And now, I mean, we've wasted everything. Ashley, none of it was wasted. What do you mean? Every second that I spent with you was the only thing I ever wanted to do oh. with my time. No, he tells What her. are you saying, Chris? I'm sorry. I I should have told you how I felt. Don't drop the album. Ashley, I swear when we get out of this... He didn't drop me. Oh, God! Ah! Now I understand why there are so many circular saw blades on the order. No! Now look, he hasn't killed anyone yet. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Oh, you should be. Jess is dead. Because here's the twist. But no one else. One fatal choice already dead. And now... He must make another. Chris, 
You can take that gun in front of you and shoot Ashley, or you can shoot yourself. Yeah, because whoever is left can live. Technically, Chris, is yours. you killed Josh. <laughs> the psycho didn't. <laughs> Don't be so silly, Chris. This is an impossible choice. He can't kill himself, and he's not going to kill Ashley. They're going to die together. If they're going to die, they're going to die together. Um, it's RSing me. It's telling me to right stick. Don't pull that trigger. Don't pull that trigger. No! 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 Yeah. Do nothing. Don't do anything. Don't play his game. <laughs> Don't play. I'm gonna do the. I'm gonna do the. Don't do anything. Sometimes the best thing to do is to do nothing. Don't play the psycho's game. If you play his game, one of you is being made into a murderer. Let's see how far he's willing to take this. No! 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 I don't want to watch. No! <laughs> no! No! Don't you see? Huh? Don't you see that this torture porn has gone too far? Huh? Now what gives you the right to play God in these people's lives? Why is he covered in blood? What makes you so special then? Huh? Okay, this has all got to be in his head. Look at it. The scene keeps changing every time he's in the office. The window's boarded up You're again now. Sick. You're a sick fuck! Now what the hell have you done to them? Huh? What the hell have you done to them? Psychopath. Ooh, strong words. Psychopath. <sighs> That's the end of the chapter. I'll be back with you in a minute or two. All right, so that was pretty eventful. But the thing is this, so far, Jess is dead because we saw her die. She'd been killed by the monster. She fell down into the mine shaft. Chris had the impossible choice of saving Josh or Ashley, so Josh is dead. But at Chris's hand, remember, the psycho technically didn't kill Josh. Technically, Chris killed Josh by making that choice. And in that situation we've just seen, with Chris again being tested with Ashley, I chose to do nothing. And then it went blank, so we don't know what happened. And I am very suspicious now of Dr. Hill and his office scenes, which seem to change just about every time we see them. And now it's confirmed to us that the psycho is the patient. He is the one being psychoanalyzed by Dr. Hill. And I'm questioning whether any of that, that bit at the end there, actually exists or whether it's all happening in the psycho's head. That was chapter six. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I really did, actually. I thought it was a very good episode. Um, I love the, the exploration and the clue finding. That was key for me. Let's see what happens, shall we, as we move into chapter seven. That'll be coming along really soon. Thanks for watching again. Bye.